Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Greta and I'm super excited to have you. If you're new here and you're not subscribed, I hope you will think about subscribing. Okay, so due to the length of this video, like I have so many products to haul here and tell you about, I'm gonna put this into two parts and this is part two. Stay tuned. Okay, if you're no stranger around here, you know I'm not the biggest fan of Arabic cheapies. Like, I keep trying them. Like, you know, why not? I can't just cast my opinion and be done with it. I will always keep trying them. But if you know, you know I'm not the hugest fan because I do find them to be a bit scratchy and I don't like that attribute. Not a, I'm not averse to cheapies. I'm not averse to dupes. You know I'm a huge fan of Dapper. Um, Alexandria also I'm a huge fan of, but I just tend to not like those. So, Athnan, uh, a big um, dupe house in, in, I believe, Dubai, a big Arab dupe house offered to send me some stuff. And I'm like, sure, I'll always try. So I was actually a little surprised. This is like a gorgeous box. Um, pretty simplistic on the inside though. There's nothing fancy, which for the price point of $30 fragrances, I wasn't really expecting very much. They sent me two fragrances. One of them I think is new, 9 p.m. Porfem, Porfem, and the Souvenir Floral Bouquet. Now I've already taken these out of the boxes. Let me do 9 p.m. Porfem first. Now I saw these notes and I was like, ooh, this is what I'm going to like. This is a new release from last year, actually. It is raspberry, apple, orange, violet with a middle of rose, iris, peony, jasmine in a base of cypress, cedar, pine, and amber. Now, for me, I kind of got more of like a black currant raspberry kind of fragrance. I was actually really excited. Now, if you're a fan of Meliora, you can see I haven't used a lot because I don't really think it has the best longevity. And I did go through a 10 ml first or 8 ml first, but I think it's not the best longevity for like a $300 fragrance. So I'm not thrilled about that. So I don't endorse it very often. Um, there's Lalique, which has Amethyst, which is the really popular like $30 dupe of it, which I also bought and like instantly decluttered. I was so disappointed with that one. That one to me was the most pitiful performance and really not a very good quality fragrance. I think you can find good quality for $30, $40, $50. That was not one of them. Um, this reminded me of those two. I think this is a kind of a dupe of Meliora also, even though the notes don't really line up. Um, I really like this and for $30, but I think it's kind of comparable to Lalique. I think, it, but actually better. I do think it's way better than Lalique Amethyst. However, not really like, you know, I'm going to let it rest a little bit and maybe because it did travel far, maybe it'll increase in intensity. Um, I have a few that I'll use that disclaimer. Even though I did give it a week, I did try it again. It was better but still not fantastic. But again, for $30 and depending what your standards are, I thought this was definitely way better than other um, Arabic brands out there. It was not scratchy. I thought that part was amazing. Um, so that is the 9 p.m. Porfem. If you're looking for a fruity floral, really about like red and blue fruits, like berries, like black currant and raspberries and blackberries and like you just get like a berry basket with some light florals. Florals take the back seat here. They're very delicate. However, they round it out so it's not just this sweet thing. It's really more of a fruity floral kind of fragrance. Um, it did go away really fast. So it's not like I got a whole lot of a base afterwards. Um, I'm getting a weird smell now, like a weird blue smell. So of the two, this was definitely not my favorite, but not terrible, but not my favorite. 
The second one, though, was a whole different story for me. This one, really pretty. It stands upside down, kind of like, um, it reminds me of the old princess bottles from Killian, the way it's a ball upside down that stands on the cap. This one is a dupe of, not a straight dupe, but it's a dupe of Delina, like a cross between Delina and Delina exclusive because you definitely have that baby powder of Delina. Um, it has the opening, however, of rhubarb, but it's not like a really astringent rhubarb. Like I get a really tart astringent rhubarb that does not agree with me on Delina. For 20 minutes, it's like puckering tart and not very pleasant to me, although it has a beautiful dry down. This is more of a fruity like there's more of the lychee sweetness in that opening along with that powdered sugar rose that you get in Delina exclusive this one I found to be phenomenal for $30 like yeah I, I did not get any screechiness on this I didn't have longevity issues I didn't have any issues with this I did have to let it sit for a week after it got here from Dubai because when it got here, I was like, what are they talking about? I don't get any of these notes. After a week, I was like, oh, it's Delina. Like, it was just so obvious. It was like, it just magically, the fragrance appeared after a week, uh, which happens. It just gets like upset by being in that ultra cold air flying international. <sighs> yeah, this one I think is a winner for sure. I mean, this is like a $30. I'm, I'm actually really impressed with this one for 30 bucks, definitely. Um, and you know, I'm not like the biggest fan of Lada Arbus, and I'll tell you, like, I don't think the 9 p.m. holds a candle to this quality-wise, not remotely, but this is a really good one. So now I'm curious, like, now I want to try other Afnans because I'm like, okay, uh, they make rare Tiffany also, which was really popular. I never did try that. But I know that was a super popular one for a while. Um, maybe I'll try it. Who knows? But yeah, now I kind of want to try more. And then for the guys out there, if you know Sammy Andros, he is a influencer from Guatemala. I believe he's in Florida, but he has deep roots in Guatemala. It's where he's from. His brand is in Guatemala and he is so incredible. I actually really like them over there. They're such good people and they're always donating proceeds to a cause, which just warms my heart. And I think it's for the children this time. Like, they're so amazing. Um, and he came up with another fragrance. Now he had another one that I reviewed. I wasn't crazy about that one. It was okay. Just wasn't my speed for um, the weather here. It was very rich and a lot of cardamom, which Guatemala is the number one exporter for cardamom, which I did not know. This one is called Wonder Dream. This one is more of a citrus aromatic woody, which is a little more my speed. It is, again, highlighting cardamom, but this one is not thick and syrupy, kind of like the other one. This one is more dry, citrus aromatic, ah, black pepper. Lots of black pepper in the opening. That's right. Sorry, I smelled this before, but it's been like two weeks, so I have to remind myself. A lot of black pepper in the opening and then a little bit of cardamom comes out and then you start to get some let me give you the notes black pepper bergamot cardamom lemon and orange i really don't get a citrusy burst it's more about the pepper and then like a dry black pepper almost like someone's cracking pepper over your salad and then the dry cardamom comes in with the middle of clary sage lavender birch pine in a base of patchouli amber then you start to get the aromatics coming through. You start to get that herbally version of lavender and sage. Yeah, it's starting to freshen up already from the lavender and a little bit of sage, clary sage. And then you get a little bit of that richness from amber. So this one almost starts light and gets a little like heavier, but I really like this one. And I think there, it's something original. It's not cliche for the men yet. It's a really nice masculine scent. I like this one. Uh, wasn't crazy about the other one. I'll just, I, I don't know. I'll have to put it down below. I can't remember the name of that one. Or Heaven Place. Heaven's Place? I just didn't like that one as much. This one I like a lot better.
Then I got a package from Lux SB, the monthly subscription box. It is the only one I do. I really like them because they have high-end niche there. They have unique niche there. Um, if you're looking to truly explore, I think they have a great selection there. All the other ones, I kind of just ran through everything they had. I wasn't seeing anything new. They're constantly adding brands at Lux SB. And for the month of August, their new brand is Piper and Pero. So I have two travels and a full bottle because they also sell full bottles now. Yeah. Uh, this is a clean brand, if I recall correctly. So Berg was my favorite out of them. Berg opens with a definite, like, sweet coconut water. A little sweetened up, a little bit of lemon in there too, like a lot of lemon juice. Not a screechy lemon, like lemon water. Definitely has something um, watery about it. Very like aquatic, like, like sea water, but calm sea water, like salty water. This one is nice. This one is definitely a very sedate fragrance. It is a very clean, sedate, um, clean girl kind of fragrance. There's something very low key about it. Uh, very clean, refreshing, but not like citrusy refreshing more musky clean girl kind of scent this one is oh lime blossom coconut water okay sea sea salt and watery notes there you go and a cedar crystal amber base crystal amber it doesn't really go ambery this one just stays close on your skin giving like a clean kind of vibe um with a light fragrance to it um this one is nice now this is a brand that tends to have notes in there that throw me and kind of turn me off. Like this one has ink in it and I see that and I'm like, oh, we started so good. Orris root, cardamom flower, natural musk, pear, skin, champagne, like I'm sold. And then ink is like skid marks for me. Like it's a skid mark crash. I'm like ink, huh? We were, we were doing so well. So this one I was leery about. This is Veil. This one, it is like this powdery, musky kind of fragrance, um, almost fabric softener, fresh kind of fragrance in that kind of vibe. However, there is that ink in there that you can smell faintly. It's not bold, but it's there. And it kind of gives this little bit of like juxtaposition to it almost gives a little bit of contrast while also blending in but makes it a little weird for me like it makes me not want to surrender to this fragrance a little bit I don't know I'm a little conflicted on this one I kind of like it I'm not sure Berg is still my favorite and then Arid now Arid is fantastic for the men um, weird name too, Arid, Berg, very um, geological kind of kind of names. This one is Blood Orange, Juniper Berries, Bourbon Vetiver, Sandalwood, Suede, and Black Elder. Um, very woody while fresh. Now the Juniper is like what they make gin out of, so it kind of has that gin kind of smell to it. A gin aromatic, if that makes sense with a little bit of fresh kind of citrusy to it. Blood orange, I guess. Um, the vetiver in here is a clean vetiver. It's a clean, fresh vetiver, because vetiver can go like seven ways to Sunday. It can be really rooty and dirty, like some Nishanese, or it can be really fresh and clean, almost cedar-like. This is on the fresh, clean, almost cedar-like kind of way, mixed with that sandalwood too, giving a really fresh, clean. I really like this one on a guy. I find it a little masculine, but I really like this one too, Arid. This is a good one. Definitely check it out. Big surprise that I did pick up at the mall. Um, gosh, and I was just shopping for shoes for an upcoming trip. Like I needed some comfortable, I wanted some new shoes. Okay, let's just be honest, I just wanted some new shoes. So of course I had to stop by the cosmetics counters. And I picked up the new Miss Dior, which mind you is like two years old. So I had kind of poo-pooed this because I just saw everything going more and more floral with all the Miss Dior's. 
My favorite personally was the Le Parfum in 2012. I ended up picking up the EDP from then, which is pretty cool. It's a cross between the La Parfum and the 2017 version, kind of, but I really prefer mostly the Le Parfum. That was the most regal smelling to me and just smelled like ladies that lunch and I absolutely loved it. It was the most elegant version. Oh gosh, and they've just gone so <sighs> easy breezy, floral, tender, the fragrances. They've gone very tender. I think I've heard even like Chanel Eau Tendre comparisons. Like there's something very tender about how Miss Dior has kind of like changed directions. So when I tried this one and I was actually really surprised and it definitely went sweet again, which made me really happy because I tend to like it sweet. My favorite was the 2012 Le Parfum and I only figured that out after it was gone. Either way, this one I really liked because it had a very powdery vanilla in there with the florals that I really liked. It was very creamy and cozy and very like chilling on the couch on a stormy day with a tea and a cashmere blanket kind of vibe to it. Very relaxing, um, very like spa atmosphere, like just a very relaxing kind of atmosphere about it. Something very clean, a clean aesthetic, not a clean fragrance. It just had something very clarifying about it and cozy and comforting. Let's see, it's the Iris Peony, Peony or Peony? What do you say? I have this argument with my mom all the time. Dior is Holy Peony. So it's gotta be peony, and my mom doesn't like that it sounds like pee. Peony, yeah, peony, holy peony. I don't know. I've thoroughly confused myself, I don't know about you. But um, the mid is apricot rose peach with vanilla musk, tonka, benzoin, sandalwood. I'll just put it up there. But I really like this one, so I decided to pick it up. I've learned my lesson the hard way. When I find a Miss Dior I like, I grab it now because they change so darn much that every few years they keep changing the version to updated or whatever. And then I haven't really liked one in a long time that I thought, you know what? I like this enough, I'm gonna grab it. <laughs> so I did, so I did. I don't know how often I'll wear it, but I did. I did it, I just did it. Um, I know there are like major Miss Dior collectors they do a better job at comparing the bottles when they have a whole lot. Uh, Charlene Ford is probably your girl when it comes to Chanel's and Miss Dior. She's your girl that I would always go to her because she like lives, eat and breathes those brands and knows them so well that I'd recommend her if you're looking for differentiation of the different vintages of Miss Dior, all the different releases, it's cause it's so confusing. I have to like do my homework every time I look into a Miss Dior. But I did it, I got the EDP. I do have the Blooming Bouquet of, I believe 2012 also, or 2016, that one hasn't changed. That one has only been one version and that is what I have. That one's a little bit more of a fruity floral. What's your favorite Miss Dior? Which ones are you thinking about getting? And I will see you guys in the next one. Mwah.